<laughs> like oil. <laughs> so, I mean, like, so many cool things. <laughs> Some that's what I was saying to you. Like, if I put anything over there, if she downloads it, it's going to mess everything up. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Look at it over there, and if you want to pick something, you can kick it on here. Oh, okay. So that you know, like, don't go and change a bunch of stuff, and then you don't remember what's changed. But, like, I'm just going to comment every time I change. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So that you can change it over here. It's good, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying so hard to take it off. <laughs> She, every time someone would be like, oh, she's like. <laughs> so now can we get the, the, the subsystem block diagrams? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I think it's important. Uh, show that. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah.
uh, Thad here has graciously agreed to come and uh, give us uh, some insight into writing group projects. I know you already are well in that process, right? And you've been doing it, but we will give you an approach that is probably uh, more body color, more organizing oriented from somebody who has been doing it for many, many years. We appreciate him coming by and talking. Please be interactive. You would, uh, I think, appreciate that. I do have a lot of questions. Am I booming? Can everybody hear me clearly? I know there are mics on. I'm conscious of that, so I don't start yelling like I usually do. So, are you all in your groups right now, more or less? Now, how many of assignments have you done? In your groups? Three. So, three, I'm getting three and four. Uh, have they all been, they're all writing assignments. You turn in writing collectively as a group? Yes. How's it been going? It's all right. <laughs> it's all right? <laughs> can, I, can I get any more information? Is it, does it seem organized? Are you figuring out things at the last minute? Or, or is everything proceeding smoothly? Probably it's a, it's a good idea to have a bit of an honest assessment. You guys can be vocal about it. You can tell them what they think. Go ahead and call out the worst person you ever know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, this this workshop is primarily designed for people who haven't actually started in their groups yet. So I'm going to be skipping through a number of things. I, I'm going to have a number of questions going through, and hopefully some of the things I mentioned will help you in what you're doing. Now I know you've done kind of intermittent assignments as a group, but you do have one big project at the end of the semester, right? Is it significantly more work than the previous ones? Do you know? Have you? We don't know yet. <laughs> they, they will be figuring it out as it goes along, as if they build on it. So, so this is probably, um, you've probably discovered already, or if you haven't, maybe you found that the difficulty of doing a group project at the last minute. No. Not work. So, uh, now, one of the, 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 the contentious issues quite frequently in group projects is there's always that guy. Um, prepare to feel awkward. The one in the group who doesn't really do kind of much and doesn't show up to things and, uh, you know, that guy. Uh, I, I, I learned through my undergraduate career that, that most groups seem to have that guy in them. Um, and they all got really good grades because I worked so hard. Um, I think you should call this person out. <laughs> you should just rat them out immediately. Tell everyone. Put it on a banner, wave it above you. Nice way of saying that is make sure get everyone's involved in the group. You want people to be pulling their way. Um, different people have different areas that they're going to be more comfortable working with. And sometimes if there's somebody who's not doing much work, it's just because they haven't found that area where they're most comfortable producing for the group. Also, sometimes it's because they're lazy. So, I have the start now here. Oh, by the way, some of these pictures are from the Writing Center and some of them are stock photos. Let's, uh, I usually play the game of can you spot the stock photo as we're going through. They, they're so boring. Um, stock photo, by the way. If you know what the goal of the meeting is when you have a meeting, it's going to be far more effective than just kind of scattering around. So one of the first things you can establish with any meeting or any contact you might have online is very clearly setting out what is the purpose of what we're doing today. And it could be something as simple as, you know, we're going to, we're all going to write together or we're going to glue everything together and try and make a complete project out of this. But if you set that out very clearly right from the very beginning, um, it's going to help you maintain everything. That's a, the philosopher Nietzsche once said the most common human stupidity is forgetting your purpose. I think he's right, but you know, maybe you have to experience a lot of terrible things before that comes up. Are any of you keeping um, keeping agendas of any sort during your meetings? What's discussed? What conclusions you come to? You aren't here. What kind of things are you recording? Things that, that we discussed with amongst ourselves. Yes. Um, things that we might discuss later on. Uh, things that were done in the past that, that, that was mentioned in the last meeting. That we're working on it this meeting. That's excellent. It's, it's a way to kind of carry over information from one place to the next. And particularly if you have a big project coming up at the end of the semester, it's going to be important to kind of keep track of where you are, who's doing what. 
Um, anything you're doing now that might be applicable to that, uh, any way you can reduce the total amount of work you do is, is probably sufficient. Oh, by the way, you know what A&M, you can self-plagiarize, so don't, don't do that. You, if you submit a, a paper that you've already submitted once before, A&M officially considers it plagiarism, <laughs> which is it's weird. Do you use deadlines in your groups? Do you do collectively agree that at this point we're going to have all this done? Yes, more or less. How's that working? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I heard. That's probably enough. But I found one of the things where people tend to get hung up the most when they're working in groups is, is they don't keep close record of what they're doing because this is going to become relevant again and again and again at certain points. But it's also having this kind of clear set of expectations for not only when do we need to have this to a person by or to the group by, but what do we do if it isn't there? Kind of a contingency plan. And this is going to become particularly important as you get to the big project at the end of the semester that's going to constitute the majority of your grade. So, wait, stock photo? Or stock photo? <laughs> stock. So, some of this, you know, are, have you all, you all know one another, right? You've exchanged contact information to some degree, or maybe you already had it? You don't know each other's names yet? <laughs> You've never met? Do you, uh, do you use drafting techniques? Do you, do you all, Write your draft, send it in, and then you're done? Or do you kind of collectively put things together, take them apart? Let's move on. I'm going to skip this because I assume you've already done this, and you say you've already done this. So do you have in your syllabus, or will you have an assignment sheet coming up for the big project at the end of the semester? We don't have it, they have it in the syllabus, but not as an assignment because they're working on assignments that are in between for the gap time. Okay, so, so the, the final assignment is that a compilation of the previous ones? Right? Yes. Okay, so you're going to put together kind of a final draft based on what you've already done. Are you collecting all this as you go on? The individual papers? Something uh, that I found a lot of groups find useful, and I, I found them useful in my own group, is, is in my own groups, is to have a kind of a clear expectation of roles. Do you have a, do any of you use a single editor for your group? A person who doesn't produce any writing, but who co compiles every, all the writing other people have done? One of the biggest problems with group projects is you can hear the voices switch through them. You, can, you might not be able to tell who wrote what section, but you can tell different people wrote different sections. This is going to become particularly important when you're doing a presentation at the end. Make sure your slides look the same. It seems like a simple thing. People overlook it. But do any of you use an individual editor? Oh. Does that sound like a good idea to any of you? Do you know somebody, maybe one of the people in your group tends to be particularly adept with, with writing? Do any of you think you would want to be a primary editor? You do? Yeah. It, so, it sounds like an easier job, too, sometimes, because you're not actually producing writing, but you're, uh, you're making sure the voice is consistent throughout. There are little things. Um, you know what a series comma is? If you have a list of three things, one comma and one comma, two comma, and three, the comma before the end is the Oxford comma. And some people use it, some people don't. Some people neglect it altogether, but if you have a bunch of different writers on a piece of paper, this can be incredibly inconsistent over the course of a paper. And if somebody's reading particularly attentively, they're going to call you out for that. They're going to say, you, you use this form, you didn't use it consistently as you go through. And these are the sorts of things an editor will usually pay attention to. Um, consistency of spelling or terminology. For example, if, if an early part of the paper defines a term with an acronym, but then later on somebody else redefines the term, or say nobody does it. Maybe the first person doesn't, doesn't provide enough information for your readers to follow what's going on. These are generally the sorts of things that an editor will want to pay attention to. And if you think this will be useful in your group to have this kind of unified voice through the entire paper, something to consider. Dan, can I add something? Yeah. So uh, I, I don't think these guys have the flexibility of not writing or having somebody just be the editor. Okay. Because all of them do have to write because part of it is a technical contribution. So they do build graded on that. Okay. But uh, that 
said, it might be good to actually have somebody that also takes on that additional role, right? Just like you have somebody that may be doing the accounting for your team or is the lead for your team, somebody could be the editor for your team. So you might want to consider that based on your skill sets, right? That'd probably be your worthwhile. Maybe the person who's doing the least otherwise. <laughs> if they're qualified for it. Um, Get this as well. So you have a big assignment coming up at the end of the semester. You're building towards it gradually. So I, I assume you already have something like a timeline set. Do you know when the due date is? Have you planned right up to it? Do you know where you're going to have your final meeting prior to the, the due date? Is the due date the presentation day? Are you staggered presentations? Sir? Yeah, the presentations are staggered. And the due date is just like this one here. They, their, their report is effectively due the same time as the presentation. Oh, okay. So this is something you want to keep in mind when you're moving everything forward. If you're having any trouble getting everything together in time, set out a very clear timeline. Make sure you have the deadlines listed on the timeline, meaning your deadline and then the actual deadline for the assignment. The deadline for the assignment you should be well in advance of. Particularly if you single someone out as the editor, you're going to need to give them time to go through and make sure the voice is consistent, uh, phrasing is consistent across the document. Now, I don't think you probably you need to worry about this too much, right? You, you have, you're building your idea as you go on? Yes. So it's, it's a, a sequential collection of documents that's going to end up in one final, is it a portfolio that you're going to put together at the end? Effectively. I don't have to answer for you guys, you can answer. <laughs> you can also read your syllabus. It's a good idea. Everyone should do it. So something that comes up quite frequently in these is, is a, there's a, a sense of disorganization. Disorganization. People will repeat the same information in different in multiple points throughout a document. Uh, sometimes it's very easy to leave information out altogether, especially if all of you know it. Uh, if you're writing different sections, if you have things divided that way, and again, you don't have a final proofreading session or, or a final editor for it, this can be really easy to do. Now, it depends on the audience you're talking to. They may be able to fill in these gaps, but at the very least, it's going to give your paper a sense of being completely disorganized. You can do something with this called reverse outlining, where you actually you go through at each point and do a quick one sentence summary for each paragraph of what the point of that paragraph is, how it relates to the main point of whatever part of the document you're working on, and what information it includes that you might not need later. You quickly mentioned it includes the definition of the, this, uh, the, the clarification of this. Then it doesn't necessarily need to be done again as time goes on. It's another really common problem with group writing projects is kind of this redundancy of information. The same information keeps popping up, keeps popping up. And it usually happens because each person, say, has one page to write. And they don't quite think they have a page of writing in them, so they just kind of fill in information as they go through and, and provide it again in the final document. Um, can I ask? I mean, I, I can ask. Can you answer? Uh, how do you, when you collect the document together, when you have a, a single document, I assume most of you are writing specific individual parts and then collecting it together in a final document. Does, is there any sort of final read through anyone does, or do you have that planned? Is it part of your process? Okay, so you have one person in the group who's doing the proofreading. Maybe somebody else who could also act as the editor. So far, we've done it solo people. We have sort of like official leaders that help us with that. Do you rotate or do you have one people? We all edited it, but like our leader approved the whole thing. And we sort of came to the back. So just saying that doesn't mean that one person approves. Pretty effective though when you have that one kind of administrator for something like that. Also gives you someone to blame it on if it doesn't do well. So who's the audience for your paper? Who are you speaking to with your writing? The grader. <laughs> that's that's a, I mean that is literally who you're speaking to is the grader. But generally these assignments have have a, a, a virtual audience. Actually, in this specific scenario, just to be very clear, uh, and we talked about this earlier, you have multiple audiences, right? One of them is your grader slash your instructor. The other one is uh, your potential sponsor, 
right? Because they are going to be taking your report and going to it. The third one is when you get to the end of uh, this class and at the end of four four to be more specific, you will be in front of a bunch of industry representatives that are going to be reviewing all the projects and giving the top three awards. So again, that's you know a broader uh, group of people that are going to be looking at this. So those are the three that I can think of as you're writing to consider as being your audience. So with a sponsor, for example, for something like this, are they necessarily going to have the technological background to understand what you're talking about? Do you know? Some of them maybe, some of them not. This is something you want to keep really clearly in mind when you're compiling everything in the document towards the end. Uh, if you are speaking to people who you need things from, but you're speaking a language they don't understand, you've lost them, and, and it's going to be difficult to accomplish any goal you have with that. And maybe something else you want to put on the editor to make sure that everything's going to be clear. Something where this can be really effective is if you get a second set of eyes, maybe somebody who's not in your field to go through it, somebody who has a, an education in some to some degree related to what you're doing, especially if they have an education related to the one your sponsor or you expect your sponsor, uh, potential sponsors to as you go through. There's a, nothing quite like losing an audience because they're not understanding the points you're making. So with this final setup, you have a main point, right? Like a big thing you're driving, a, a purpose. What's the purpose of your project at the end of the semester? What's your goal with it? Other than getting a good grade. If you're speaking to multiple audiences, I assume there's a purpose. To convince them to use the product. Exactly. Okay, so it's it's a it's a persuasive goal essentially. Yes. You want to be able to inform people to use these particular products. Yes. To, to buy what you're selling. Yes. More or less. This is if if you can chart things out in these terms as a group. This is an outlining uh, technique that you can use as a group. But think about it in your own section of the paper, whatever you're writing. Be able to spell out very clearly and explain to the rest of your group how this particular paragraph helps you accomplish that goal. Like if you took, maybe you write up, wrote a page or you're writing a particular section. If you can explain to the other members in your group, this, this informs the reader of the, these particular virtues of this product. Easy enough, right? It's, it's confusing the goal and, and thinking that the goal is just getting all the writing done is going to be counterproductive to what you're doing. You want to have a clear thing set out as you go into this. Now, have you divided the groups or have you divided the writing projects based on individual strengths or do you think that's not a thing? Do you want to be have the same background, the same kind of knowledge? I saw you nodding. Mm -hmm. More or less divided. <laughs> yeah, we each have uh, our own field of interest. And so we try to split up the different subsystems of our product uh, based on those and so when we're writing our reports we focus in on the subsystem that we're um, that we know the most information about. So that's the way to do it. So with your subfields, with your specializations, with your areas you're in, do you know if everybody in your group understands the same things that you do? Do you have do you have different knowledge maybe you've brought to that? I'm asking for the purpose of being able to speak to a wider audience. Because if you have spe specific subdomain knowledge that you don't expect the other people in your group have, but they can still understand what you're saying, there's a good chance you're going to be more easily, more clearly speaking to people without that. It's a way of kind of le leveraging the knowledge within your own group to make it work to your advantage. Remember, you're trying to sell this idea. You need to be able to communicate with a lot of people who don't have the same technological background. Do you do drafting? Or is the first draft the final draft? How do you do the drafting? How do your groups do it? Those of you who do it. Well, our, this semester, we, it's kind of been set up to where we have something to do at a certain time. It's kind of the first draft. And then as we learn more about our project, we add to it as we go on. Oh, OK, great. And so it kind of turns into a, you have what you have, and then you add to it. You're, the, the revising is built into it. Yes. That's an right. excellent right. setup. Yeah. yeah. So, do, so do you go back and revise the earlier submissions? Yeah. We get feedback. That's excellent. 
it's nice that this is built in the process because it's a very easy part to overlook. So this is where you are with the revisions. Do you have one person who does the revision? Does each person revise their own particular section? And so then do you recompile it? We kind of use like a Google Doc, so just fix it as it goes. Okay, great. So how, how many other people are using Google Docs? How many other groups? Those of you who are, what are you doing? We're using GitHub, so we will use Word documents and then push it off to the same repository. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of the same directory. What about this group here? Hello? Oh, yeah. Are they? Are y'all are in the class? How are you collecting your documents together? Uh, oh, they all send it to you. That's great. She's <laughs> <laughs> the editor by default. Yes. You all agreed on that, right? That was. A... <laughs> so. When you're combining these and you're putting them back together, one important thing to keep in mind is, is, again, you want the revisions to make sure that you're going to have a final consistent document across the entire document. You want to avoid repeating information, meaning if you're going to use that same information again later, you, you want to make sure you don't necessarily repeat the same information, unless some, there's some aspect of it that you need to modify or, or change your presentation of in order to keep the narrative moving. I, uh, so something I'm gonna I'm gonna move to right here. So I was working with an engineering class once not long ago, and there were group projects in because that's become quite a standard thing in a lot of the, the STEM fields. You know what I mean when I say STEM, science, technology, engineering, yeah. Uh, group projects are becoming more and more frequent, and the final proofreading session. Uh, didn't go so well, or nobody did it, nobody was paying attention. And this is a horror story, but, but there's a bigger point. Uh, there was a lot of assessment going on in the documents. The groups had to assess things as they went through. Uh, spell check will not correct a misspelling if it's an actual word. Uh, assess ends with two S's. S's ends with one S. Otherwise, it is the exact same word. So one of the groups handed in a paper that from beginning to end, was filled with asses, just all over the place. And I, I was looking at this, and I, at first I, I started telling the other people, say, hey, check this out, which was rude, but I did it. Um, <laughs> but then I thought, nobody looked through this before they handed it in. I mean, at least one person in this group of seven people needed to realize that this was not the word they wanted. Uh, if you suspect you may have any problems in this regard, probably not as extreme as that, uh, it, it may be worthwhile to get a second set of eyes on the final document before you turn it in. You can, if you, you can book an appointment at the Writing Center as a group. You can ask someone else in a different group to look at it. This, these are the little sorts of things where if nobody in your group has caught them yet, there's a chance they won't as you go through. So with that, what do you think? Check out the guy in the front. So with that, you have your project put together in the virtual sense. Uh, we're going to come back later, I think on the 25th, to talk to you about techniques of oral presentations. I'm, it'll either be me or I'll send someone else. Something like that. Are most of you comfortable with public speaking? Sort of. I, I asked that question in an ag leadership class once with 250 students in it, and every single student raised their hand. Okay. Yes. And we're good at it. My confidence is good, but you probably not. But, so if you have any 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 issues you find in your group as you're going through, if you if you think the writing's not up to the standards that you, you would want it to be or that your instructors inspect it to be, you can book a group consultation at the writing center. You can have one person book the appointment and the entire group can come in to work on something. This may be some uh, uh, Something you may find useful. One question on that: What's the wait time? The wait time varies throughout the semester. So it's it's if you know you're going to need the appointment at some point, you can book it now because you can book appointments all the way through the end of the semester. 
this. Sometimes we book up for two or three weeks straight. Though, so. I tried that accident. Yeah. yeah. Don't wait. Do it now. <laughs> Does anybody have any, any questions or any observations about this? Are your groups all, all perfect? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're not, come by and see us or discuss some of the things in there. Try, try defining or delegating rules. That tends to be one of the most effective things you can do if you've already been in a group for a while, but the work isn't particularly efficient. And that, that's all I have. Uh, so guys, we're, we're, we're done, so we're, we're free to go. If you have questions, you will talk to me. Feel free to do that. Otherwise, um, to do, you have real...